Peace and blessings. This is Brother Mike X. Welcome to another clip from my YouTube channel, Brother Mike X Speaks. Um, tonight, I just want to build with you right quick. I just came out of, you know, one of my last study sessions uh, from my second home, Barnes and Nobles in Bay Plaza, Co-op City, the Northeast Bronx, the forces of gentrification are uh, making their presence felt in the Northeast Bronx and they're going to be closing, you know, this Barnes and Nobles as of the 31st of December. And um, for me, it's crazy, man, because I've been coming here for like 10 years. You know, if I'm not at work, um, a lot of times I'm here, you know, studying, doing the knowledge, um, networking, building, meeting a host of wonderful, great people. And, um, you know, so this place is definitely going to be missed by me. And in some ways, I got to admit, it's kind of going to be like bittersweet, you know. Uh, bitter, of course, man, because this has been such a large part of my life over the last 10 years, man, um, that I'm going to miss this place most definitely. But sweet. Because I recognize and realize that there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the communities. And the time that I will be spending here has to be filled up with something else. And I definitely plan to be more productive, you know, and striving to apply, you know, the consciousness, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the truth that I've been able to track down through coming up in Barnes and Nobles, man. Um, those of you in the North East Bronx who know me, you know, y'all know me not just as someone who strives um, for higher awareness and consciousness, but you also know me as someone who has put effort in on the activist side, you know, to strive to bring people together, you know, so that we can begin to build socially, you know, um, that, that social unity and cohesion Which opens us up to being able to build and enjoy Political and economic power Potentially You know, the foundation is your unity You can't be strong politically And you cannot be strong economically If you don't have that unity and that cohesion You know, amongst yourself as a people You know So Yo, man it's December, you know, it's actually December 2nd, you know, 2017. And um, in this time, a lot of times at the end of the year, people want to close out the year strong and they want to go into the next year even stronger. You know, it's a time when people begin to reflect on how the year went, you know, and how uh, did they meet the goals that they set for themselves? You know, those New Year's resolutions. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are going to be making New Year's resolutions pretty soon. And, um, you know, especially now, man, for my people, for black people, um, it shouldn't just be regarded as New Year's resolutions. It has to be new life resolutions, you know, because we are in a time where we're going to have to lean on each other and rely on each other more now than ever before. You know, this is a time when those of us who believe in God, you know, um, from whatever particular spiritual or religious um, background that you practice, you're going to have to really strengthen that bond with God, the creator of all. And so, you know, I say, um, I say all praise is due to the most high God. You know, I thank you, God, for allowing me to live as long as you've allowed me to live because I was a particular brand of knucklehead in my youth, you know, and even now I'm striving to make up on, make up for mistakes that I've made. Even now I'm striving to come into a peace and serenity in my life where I turn from the world and the lowly customs and habits, man, that I at one time felt was so important and turned to the divine purpose, you know, for which my life was created and has been maintained, you know, by you, you know. And for those of you who don't believe in God or believe in the creator, you know, 
hey man, what can I say? You know, I can understand that there's been a lot of chaos and confusion shown, um, sown. You know, that has disconnected man from the source of his creation, man. But um, the only thing that I can do is strive to walk in the power that has been revealed to me. You know, so, and I say, you know, I don't particularly trumpet one religious spiritual perspective over another. You know, um, I, I look at God in a spiritual capacity. You know, I believe that God is the sum total of all truth, revealed and, and not revealed. You know what I mean? God is, is, is they say, is omnipotent. You know, when you deal with the concept of God, God is omnipotent, all powerful, omnipresent, meaning everywhere throughout the universe and omniscient, you know, all knowing, you know, and as human beings, we have been blessed above all creatures on this planet with the ability to think, to reason, to learn, to grow and to come up into the higher consciousness of God, you know, in our finiteness, you know, in our limited capacity, you know, we are able to understand more and more of, of the truth of God and discern and to be able to create, you know, through that consciousness, wonderful things, man. You know, airplanes that fly through the sky, rocket ships, satellites, you know what I mean? Bridges and just all types of things, man. Electri the, the tapping and the utilization of electricity and nuclear power and all types of things man has been able to create. The problem is, is that in all of that intelligence, man has not cultivated a, 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 a spiritual practice of love, of mercy, of compassion. You know, in all of that intelligence, man has still held on to his ego you know what i mean and and as some people say the ego uh is an acronym for edging god out so a lot of people have been blessed with the power to come up into the thinking of god but instead of them bowing down in submission to the most high god they've wanted to become gods besides god and they've wanted to rule over other people you know what i mean as god you know and this is where you know the hatred, the confusion, the darkness that reigns supreme on this planet. This is what it's rooted in. And the only solution to being able to overcome that has to be the activation of each one, reach one, and teach one. You know, it's time for each one of us, man, to choose truth over lies. It's time for each one of us to teach, to, uh, to, to reach for, you know, a, a reunion with God over submitting ourselves to the lowly, divisive customs of this dark and decaying world, man. Stop trying to go along to get along and return to your creator. You know what I mean? And then you will be able to become liberated from those lowly customs so that you can begin to exhibit the power, you know, to remake and reform your life, you know? In the light of love, in the light of truth, and be a beacon of hope for other people. So, family, I say to my people, black people particularly, you know, what's on my mind right now is a book that I read a long time ago and probably need to reread again soon to refresh, you know, my um, awareness, my, you know, of that particular book and the truth that it represented. And I'm thinking of the book. Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington, you know, Booker T. Washington was a, you know, he was born in slavery, you know, around uh, about six or seven years before slavery was officially, you know, done away with. And in, in his book, he talks about his remembrance as a child of you know like a white man riding up on a horse with like a basically like a scroll you know and announcing to the enslaved population that you are now free you know the emancipation proclamation and all of that and you are now free and he talks about how there was a celebration you know that erupted you know because by this time 
generations upon generations upon generations of slavery, enslavement had existed amongst black slash African people in the United States. E and even before the United States was officially formed, slavery had reigned supreme. By that time, um, the enslavement and what became America, it had existed for over 300 years by this point. So you could imagine that there was, you know, a celebration that erupted. And he talked about how this celebration lasted for about, you know, half an hour to an hour from memory. It's been a while since I read this book. And then he talked about how a spirit of depression and melancholy began to creep over, you know, the, you know, the former slaves, you know, at this point. And they became depressed, you know, in their in their energy, you know. And he talked about how about, you know, say 20 half an hour, you know, minutes afterwards, how they was going back up to the big house, you know to contract with their former slave master to keep them on, you know, and to help them to make sense of what is this thing freedom? You know, they had never known freedom. They didn't know what freedom actually meant, you know, because they had been trained all of their lives to be enslaved and to be dependent upon white people for their existence, you know, and all types of, uh, Division had been sown amongst them. You know, the men had been divided from the women. The older had been divided from the young. You know, the light skin had been divided from the darker skin. You know, the enslaved who worked in the big house, you know, um, had been divided from the field Negroes who lived in the huts and had to work out in the fields. So they didn't know how they would be able to be free without dependency on their masters. And you know, family, as much progress seemingly has been made, you know, in America, as I look at it, and as a lot of people look at it, man, we're not much better off in 2016 going into 2017 than we were at that point in the 1860s, you know? when slavery officially ended. Basically, we're in the same position. Yeah, there might be a little bit more opportunity. You know, yeah, you can get up and you can go when you wanna go and come when you wanna come. But as far as the rules, the principles, the standards of what it takes to become a free people, you know, who are able to take advantage of the concept of self-determination, meaning that you're able to determine for yourself how you want to set up and run your own communities and, 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 and to order your own affairs as a people. You know, this is the right that has been denied black slash African people in America, you know, and everybody else has been able to take advantage of that human right. You know, that citizen right, you know, that citizenship right as an American citizen, that human right as a child of God. Everyone else has been allowed to take advantage of those rights and to build and carve out their own geographic enclaves and bend those geographic places where they live to their social, political and economic will. So you have Chinatowns, you have Little Italy's. You have little careers, you know, you have all of these things. You have the Jewish communities, you know, where they own the whole thing. Upwards, downwards, diagonally, left to right is theirs. But it's only when it comes to the black slash African neighborhoods that you see this caricature, you know, this colonization, where you see the overwhelming numbers a lot of times dominated in these areas. It's like, you know, most we, we're the dominating population there. But we've been kept from the knowledge, the capacity, you know, to exist as free people, you know, to be able to organize ourselves socially, you know, so that we can begin to exhibit the type of economic and political power that will give us control over our neighborhoods. And so I say at this point, family, because if you've been building with Brother Mike you know what I mean? If you've been checking out my YouTube channel, 
um, Brother Mike X Speaks. You know, some of this I've covered before, so I don't want to be redundant. But I do want to just give this message, man, as we come to an end of the new of, of 2016, as we come to an end of eight years of the Obama presidency, as we begin to move into the presidency of Donald Trump. You know, as we recognize and realize that we don't have any friend on high, you know, that we can cast our hopes onto, whether it's Obama or a lot of people was hoping that it would be Hillary, you know, because they believe that Hillary would give them, you know, some type of illusion, you know, of, you know, reliance, you know what I mean, above and beyond a Donald Trump, and that's debatable. You know, from my standpoint, man, I don't see it. I don't see that we would have been better off, you know, with the Hillary Clinton presidency. I don't think that we would have been any better off with a Hillary Clinton pre presidency than we would have been under eight years of Barack Obama because we didn't fare that well or that much better, you know, under the Barack Obama administration. And some people will get mad for me saying that, you know, but it's the truth. You know, we didn't see an uprise in political power. You know what I mean? To where the politics and the politicians, you know, were seeking to build a stronger relationship with us as black people, you know, seeking to use their representation, whether it's, it was in the city council, whether it was in the state assembly or the state senate, you know, whether they, it was in Congress or the big senate, federal, you know, um, we didn't see a whole lot of uh, efforts or moves being made on our behalf, you know, and as a matter of fact, you know, Barack Obama said many times that I'm not the president of black America. I'm the president of United States of America, you know, and in that time also, you know, in that time also, the LGBT community was able to win, you know, major victories and attention coming to them from Barack Obama. You know, and other communities were able to get their, um, you know, things on their agenda done. But when it came to us, you know, nothing really happened. And again, you know why that happened? That happened because we are divided and conquered. We are disempowered. You know, most of us don't know how to live our lives in a way where we can take ownership over our lives as men, as women to where we can begin to build from a like-minded point of view, you know, and standing with each other and beginning to, you know, lock arms as one. Again, like I said, that social unity and cohesion to where we can begin to grow in political power, you know, so that when we go to vote, we don't just go to vote because our, we, you know, with the, with the mindset our people fought and died, you know, so that we can vote. You know, because no, our people did not fight and die just so that we can vote. Our people fought and died because they believed that the vote could be used as a tool to produce good things. You know what I mean? Policies, you know, that would help us to take stronger hold on our citizenship as American citizens and as and as and 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 as children of God. That's why they 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 uh, fought and died to try to give us that right to vote, you know. So, family, here I go. What do we have to do at this point? First and foremost, family, we got to start at the lowest common denominator. You know, a lot of times, man, we focus on the bigger picture. A lot of times, too much, you know. A lot of times we focus on the system and what white people and other people are doing, you know, and we don't focus enough on ourselves individually as men, as women. You know, a lot of times we focus on, you know, our people and the ignorance of our people. You know, our people don't want to learn. Our people are deaf, dumb and blind. This is what I hear from, you know, my comrades in the so-called conscious community, you know, whether they be. Uh, Moors, whether they be 5%, whether they be Christians, whether they be black nationalists, whether they be Pan-Africanists or whatever, a lot of times there's too much focus on the system. You know, there's too much focus on those who don't 
got the knowledge yet, you know, and they're living, you know, their lives, you know, from their point of view, wrong. And there's not enough emphasis on what are you doing? You know what I mean? As an individual, you know, to breathe life into, you know, your life, you know, to take ownership of your life physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. You know what I mean? So you can live that uplifted life so that you can begin to exhibit power, you know, not just exhibit the fact, man, that you read some books, that you listened to some DVDs. You know what I mean? That you checked out some documentaries, you know, but no, you're living an empowered life different than the lives that are lived by the average everyday black folk who are still caught up in the system. You know, and I'm saying this to say, you know, so what you saying, brother Mike, you free and you empowered and all of that? Nah, family, yo, I'm still trying to walk this out. You know what I mean? I'm still trying to grow. But I have come to the realization, man, that instead of focusing on the outside, you know, whether it be, you know, those who are in the system, you know, I mean, the system, you know, uh, uh, who are running the system or focusing on whoever don't want to get down with this consciousness thing. No, I am to focus on myself. You know what I mean? Focus on seeking the truth of my existence. Focus on applying the truth to my existence. You know what I mean? So I can defeat the opportunistic ailments, man, that are destroying us, you know, um, you know, the diabetes, the stroke, the high cholesterol, you know, um, all of the opportunistic ailments, man, that are destroying our community because we're eating the wrong foods. You know, we're eating foods that are not compatible with maintaining a healthy and vibrant physical life. You know what I mean? Um, so that we can begin to wean ourselves off of listening to all of the ratchet, you know, music, you know, the love and hip hop is back on and empire and all of these other things, man, that's striving. And, and you know, and not to mention keeping it real, you know, the NBA, you know, who's better, LeBron or, or Curry or whatever. All of that stuff, man, is designed to keep us from looking at the position that we're living in right here and right now and taking ownership and control over how we're living our lives you know and are we able to take advantage of our lives to be productive and creative so that we can build our own communities again you know what i mean so number one family i just want to say and i want to wrap this up because i've been talking for a little while we need people, man, who are seeking to do the knowledge, you know? What do you mean? You say that all the time, brother Mike, do the knowledge. I'm saying, when I say do the knowledge, I'm saying, yo, seek information that you can begin to apply to make your life a better life as an individual, you know? Um, so that you can make the proper stance, you know, to... Again, heal yourself. You know, I found I found at one point in my life, family, that diabetes, man, was getting ready to take me up out of here. And this is just me being transparent with you. You know, diabetes was getting ready to take your brother up out of here, man. A good year and a half, you know, ago. You know, and what was most hurtful for me, you know, was a lot of my family on social media and others who knew me personally when they found out that your brother was in that precarious position you know of dealing with diabetes and and possibly heading towards amputation or worse a lot of them was like yo you you know you as much as you know you getting ready to tap out the diabetes like they really went in on me but i appreciate it though they really went in on me. They like, yo, as much as you know, that's what you're getting ready to fall victim to? They was like, come on, brother. You, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be above and beyond that, man. And they and they was they was dead honest. They was right on point with that. You know, and I'm happy to say, man, that through the grace of God, that wake-up call was a real one. You know, 
Because what, what I was doing was I was just feeding one faculty of my life. You know, I've, I've been into doing the knowledge, man, seeking, you know, truth for 25 years now, man. So mentally, man, I feel like I'm cock diesel. You know what I'm saying? But physically, I was, I was, I was in the fast food restaurants. I was drinking soda and, and, and juice, you know what I mean? With, with, with loads and loads of sugar, you know? And I knew that I had a diabetic condition, but I wasn't focused on keeping this body strong, you know, striving to heal my body and make it vibrant, you know what I mean? So that I can live long enough to put into practice all of the consciousness, all of the truth, all of the books that I was reading, man. So I was contradicting you know, I was living a contradictory, imbalanced life. I was focused heavily on the mental aspect, but I was paying no attention at all to the physical aspect. So this was a wake up call, family. It made me realize, man, that when you lean too far to one side, what do you do? If you lean too far to the left or you lean too far to the right, you lean far enough, you are gonna fall over and bust your behind, right? You know what I mean? The first thing that we got to begin to do in these communities is we got to seek to begin to balance the attention that we're paying to our own individual lives. Forget Trump. Forget police brutality. I shouldn't say forget that, but you get what I'm saying. You know, you can't do nothing about Trump. You can't do nothing about police brutality if you're living an imbalanced life. You know, if you're practicing life in a way where you're feeding yourself poison and garbage, you know, and, 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 and opening yourself up, man, to heart disease and stroke and diabetes, you know what I mean? That's what's gonna take you out. It's not gonna be the police. You don't gotta worry about the police taking you out. You gonna take yourself out. You know what I'm saying? If you are feeding yourself mental garbage, you know, the music, you know, the um, all of the stupid, filthy, you know, programming, Programming, get that. They're programming you through the radio, through the through the um TV. You don't gotta worry about somebody else taking you out. Cause you're taking yourself out. You see what I'm saying? You're taking yourself out, man, by feeding your mind with pollution, with garbage. You know what I'm saying? And because you're feeding your body, you're feeding your mind with garbage, there's no way that you can come into a space and place of peace and serenity in your emotional equilibrium and balance, man, so that you can learn how to love yourself, you know, so that you can learn how to treat yourself with compassion, with forgiveness, for mercy. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't, you can't treat anyone else with love, with mercy, with compassion, with forgiveness if you haven't been practicing those things. But if you're not practicing physical health and well-being, if you're not practicing mental elevation and growth and consciousness, there's no way that you can come into a peaceful and serene emotional equilibrium and balance. So there's no way that you can build the necessary the relationships that you need to be able to build with your friends, loved ones, family and neighbors. So there goes unity out the window. You know what I mean? So, yo, family, man. You know, I'm, I'm almost at a half an hour, man. And I know that some of our people don't have the attention span, you know, to listen this long. And I don't mean that as disrespect. I just mean it as the truth because some people have said that to me. So on that note, we're going to continue this conversation, family. We got a lot of work to do, you know. And I tell you, family, this is a good time to be living. This is a good time to be living, you know, because the illusion, the illusion that we was going to be maintained forever, you know, by some benevolent force from on high, it's, it's been ripped away, you know. Like I said in the last video that I did, man, when Donald Trump made his, his mantra, make America great again, he was talking about that time back in the, the 20s, back in the 30s, back in the 40s, man. You know, where black people, where segregation was in full effect, you know, you know, and at that time, 
The good thing about that time is that we knew we didn't have a friend in the White House. We knew that we didn't have friends on high. We knew that we wasn't accepted, you know, by the governmental, corporate powers in the country. So we knew that we had to rely upon one another. We knew that we had to practice a social unity and cohesion so that we can supply our food, clothing, and shelter for ourselves because, because integration, the illusion of integration had not been open to us at that point. So as they talk about, you know, make America great again, I say, yo, let's go back to that time when we had to practice love. We had to practice compassion amongst one another. Because if we didn't, we knew that it was good night, man. You know what I mean? So having said that, I say peace and blessings to you, family. I hope that you get something out of what I shared with you tonight, man. I pray that the Most High will visit you, you know, and help you to begin to make some type of realistic peace with your past. So that you can recognize that every day that you awaken is a new opportunity to begin to build a much new, a much improved invigorated and vibrant life man you know what i mean so that you can having do, do that having done that you can begin to offer good things man to the family you know so that we can build the way we supposed to build peace and blessings yo